Hello and welcome back to Dawn Chorus Writes. I'm Miraculous Ladybug, fan fiction and audio fiction. This is a lyrical one shot and it is based on the song Perfectly Imperfect. So I hope you enjoy it. A massive shout out and thank you. And this piece was actually inspired by the beautiful artwork in the thumbnail by Cece over on Instagram. You can find her link down below. It is under CU Sketcher. So make sure you go and send her loads of love. And uh, make sure you send me loads of love by smashing that like button. Comment down below what you think of it. And also subscribe so you do not miss out on other one shots and other series and other things to come. And also, um, just a shout out that I have opened a Patreon page. There is no pressure, but if you'd like to support this channel and myself with writing, and then you'll find a link down below. But in the meantime, enjoy. Perfectly Imperfect, Adrian's POV. Ah, what's that noise? Kid, the phone! Plag groaned as he gave Adrian a shove on the side of his head. Plag, what? Uh, oh yeah. He reached his hand out to the side and grabbed the buzzing phone. What time was it? He squinted at the bright light compared to the darkness of the room. A picture of a smiling face stared back at him. Marinette? He quickly swiped at the screen with one hand and rubbed his eyes with the other. Princess, what's... Adrian, I'm sorry, I know it's late, it's just... Marinette, what's wrong? It's... it's nothing, I just... Oh, it sounds silly now, I just needed to hear your voice, that's all. I had to make sure it wasn't real. He could hear her trying to let out a low breath, but it stuttered in her throat. I know, it was just a dream, and yet, it seemed surreal, and all I wanted was your voice, and, well, a cuddle would be nice too. It's not silly, my love, and it's not the first time either. Will you please tell me what it's all about, so I can help? It's hard to explain, really, especially over the phone. Do you want me to come round? I could wrap you in my arms and be your prince, willing to fight away any more nightmares that dare come near. It's 2am. Way too late. I couldn't. Marinette, the love of my life. I will be there in five minutes. I love you. And thank you. Adrian waited for the phone to cut out on the other side before sliding it in his pocket. Buddy, we need to... Is she still having these nightmares and still not telling you what they're about? Plag grumbled, shoving a piece of cheese into his mouth. Adrian rolled out of bed, still feeling sleep lingering in his limbs. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. After everything that has happened over the past few months, and she was there for me. She was the strong one whilst I... Kid, it's not... Every day you find out your father is Hawk Moth, then Shadow Moth, and finally Monarch? There was a slight jest to Plague's voice, knowing it would take the edge off the subject. But you're right. She's the one who brought you back to life. For days she wouldn't leave your side. I mean, Tiki had to beg her to sleep. She's everything to me. So to think that she's in pain and hiding something doesn't feel right. Adrian sighed, grabbing his flat keys for when he would return during daylight hours. During the past couple of weeks, these late night calls from Marinette were becoming a regular occurrence. They started off with her in a panic, barely breathing down the phone as he raced to her side. She wouldn't, couldn't tell him what it was about as she buried her face into his chest whilst repeating the words, sorry. However, now it was as if they both expected her to call needing his comfort and reassurance of his voice. Sometimes that was enough, but like tonight, he could hear it in the tension of her voice. When she needed the security of his embrace, wrapping his arms around so tight that they moulded together into one person. He would do anything for her, for his love, his ladybug, his princess. 
He just wished he knew how to make the pain stop. Adrian remained in his PJs, waited until Plag had finished stuffing extra cheese into his university bag for the morning, technically in the next five hours, and grabbed a set of clothes. Buddy, are you ready? Plag nodded his head. Close out. Cat jumped onto the ledge of his living room window and stared across the rooftops. Soon he wouldn't be able to do this once Nino had moved in and banished away the silence of living alone. He had asked Marinette first, but both agreed that maybe it was too soon, especially after Tom comments of marriage first. But these late night visits and the chance to hold her in his arms will have to do for now. Cat didn't need to go far. He had chosen a flat which meant he was only a couple of blocks away from her. He landed down in the balcony and saw her head peeking out of the skylight window and couldn't help the smile that spread across his face. Hello, princess. Hey, my kitty. Relief flashed into her red eyes at the sight of him before ducking back down and giving him room to follow. She had been crying again. This was one of the more serious nightmares. Before what he now liked to call Doomsday, or Dee Dee for short, he knew what it was like to have the occasional nightmares, relieving Kuma fights where the villain had won, or that Ladybug had died instead of him. After Dee Dee, however, his nightmares took him, took them to another level, becoming so real it was physically painful that they had lost. Or he had betrayed Ladybug to save his mother. Or just watching his father's face transforming into Monarch repeatedly. To the point where it was all he could see. The fear, the anguish he had felt was now reflected into his love's eyes and that would never do. He dropped his bag down next to her bed. Close in he muttered, watching Plag zoom towards where Tiki was still sleeping above the bed. How are you feeling now? Adrian said, pulling Marinette into his arms and stroked his hand down her back, feeling the soft cotton fabric under his touch as he let out a long sigh at his neck. Foolish, she whispered, pressing herself tighter against him. Her head against his chest, he stroked black strains of her fallen hair, his fingers running through the silky texture. Don't say that. Not to me. I understand. I just wish you would tell me what happens in them. It might even help them loosen their grip on you, like it did for me. He pressed his lips into her hair and breathed in her sweet berry scent, the reassurance sensation that he was home. But I know it can't happen. Not now. He is... gone? Her voice faded off. Sorry, bringing him up? She uncurled from his grip and stepped to the side of the bed. Stop saying sorry. You have nothing to say sorry for. Especially not over him. He pulled back the covers and snuggled in next to her. He felt her heart racing, pounding in her chest, which sent ripples into him. So is this nightmare and about Akuma, one that already happened? She buried her face into his chest as her words became muffled into the fabric and the sound of his rapid heart. Yeah, sort of. I just don't understand why it's still playing around in my head. It happened so long and compared to what we've gone through. He lifted her chin so she could see the look on his face. I think I might be wrong, but it could be where the fear started. So with everything that has happened, it is all reflected back, focused on that moment. But which Akuma was that bad? He watched her squeeze her eyes shut, fighting back the images. You have been so strong for me. It's my turn to be strong for you he said, brushing back her fringe off her face. My love, open your eyes and look at me. She did as he requested, but her eyes focused on a button on his t-shirt rather than on his eyes. You're my bugaboo, and I'm your kitty. Whatever it is, we can face it together. 
he let out a long breath and peered at his eyes before casting them back down again. Oh, I don't even know how to start this. She bolted out of his arms and sat upright. I'm scared, and not just of nightmares. She scrunched up her face and rubbed the base of her palms into her eyes and against her forehead, causing them both to turn red. He didn't want to admit it, but some of her fear was rubbing off on him. What was so bad that made her react like this? He wanted to wrap his arms around her, but instead stroked his hand down her back and felt her body trembling. Can you tell me one thing? We will do it a step at a time. Whatever you are comfortable with. She nodded her head. That was good. Why don't we start with something simple, like... How long ago was it? Three years, five months and six days. She answered straight away, without hesitation, taking him by surprise. You see, it was so long ago now, it doesn't even matter. I'm only being foolish. Marinette, you didn't even need to think about the answer, and the fact that you were dreaming about it means it does matter. You're the last crack in the pavement from the devastation. Please, princess, let me help you. He leaned closer and breathed into her shoulder. But most of them, the nightmares, are nothing compared to what they were like after it happened. But then it was one side I would see, and now it's both, and it's twisted somehow. She pulled at the bottom of a t-shirt and wrapped it around one of her fingers, twirling it around into it was tight. He couldn't help feeling concerned and guilty at the same time. As a kitty, there was nothing she should have gone through alone, especially involving a kuma and now knowing she had been hiding the secret, brought back old feelings he had long thought were gone. But then again, she was trying to be open now with him and it was his job, his role to listen. He spoke softly. What do you mean? She shook her head, and he saw the tears were falling again. Okay, how about this? What did the Akuma do? It wasn't Akuma, right? She nodded her head and pursed her lips. Entered the world? He hadn't expected that either. I mean, they had faced some tough Akumas, which meant if Hawk Daddy, a nickname Plague had come up with, the little gremlin, but yet quite fitting had gotten their miraculous meant a wish, but none that he could remember had the power to actually end the world. But it didn't happen in our reality, she added. Adrian paused and pulled back slightly, reading from the sudden news. How could there have been an Akuma that bad and he hadn't known about it? Bunnix? The Akuma was that bad. Bunnix had to step in? You see how foolish it is when it didn't even happen. She shrugged her shoulders and her voice became a higher pitch. Because we fought it off. Then how do you remember but I don't? She turned her head slightly and he saw her open and close her mouth a few times, calculating her words carefully before continuing. Okay, can you tell me something about this other timeline? Anything, big or small? She didn't tell me much. Nothing really of why or how, just something had gone wrong in the future and she needed me to fix it. I mean, we weren't even fighting one at the time. I just happened to be suited up. Her eyes glazed over, becoming lost back in this alternative world. Instinctively, he reached his arm around her waist to grab her hand in between his, and anchored to help pull her back. When I was taken there, most of the world was already gone. The water had filled the streets, time was running out, and it was cold even though there was a blue sky. She ran her fingers across the back of his hand. I felt like I had been put into a wild place. And there were moments I was washed up and emotionally wasted, 
but I had to keep fighting for... She squeezed his hand a little tighter before enfolding it between her two, and he noticed the other one was covered in newly formed scratch marks on the usual soft skin. This world, it's keeping you. You're staying up for... You're staying up at night so you don't dream about it? But what I don't get is why I, Cat Noir, wasn't there. I didn't say that. So we were fighting this Akuma together? She shook her head again. Marinette, look at me. I'm confused. What do you mean? I... We... Fighting? A silent tear rolled down her cheek as she squeezed her eyes shut. Concrete and water was all that was left and I didn't know what was happening or why. He gently cupped the side of her face and brushed the tear away. You know what baffles me sometimes is when the will to survive pushes us through. As if you're the flower in the concrete, hoping to find your way into the light. I don't know if I could face that again. I am not strong enough. She moved her face against the palm of his hand, still unwilling to look at him in the eyes. Nuru is saved back in the miracle box. We don't have to fear that anymore. There is always a chance we have to face it again. Now that people know what is capable, do you really think someone won't try, won't want that kind of power? She looked round at him, barely able to open her eyes as his tears glued them shut. He ran a thumb over her lashes and whispered, That is a what if the future can deal with. Right now, all I want to do is picture our lives together and it's beautiful. I want to show you what you can't see at the moment because of fear. I want to show you the same hope you gave to me. He watched as her eyes popped open and revealed her ocean eyes, wondering if they reflected back the stark waters of this haunting world. And so what? You're giving me up. I don't mind. I'm here for you, my love. No matter how many times you're keeping me up at night. But when I close my eyes, all I can see is this world which was white, grey and blue. So, let me give you every colour that I can find in your eyes, which you thought were blue, but there are so much more than that. They are filled with the depths of colour hidden beneath the ocean surface. Adrian, I... it is... Oh, I can't breathe. The panic in her voice shattered his heart. She folded into his embrace like a fearful child, never wanting to let go in case the evil monster caught up to her. I know that pain. I can hear it in your voice when you wake me up at night, and it breaks my heart. And no matter what it is, know that you were perfectly imperfect. After all, we are only human, riddled with faults, but I love you more for it. They make you the person that you are. And right now, you're the one hurting. But what was it you said to me as you lay on the floor next to me when I couldn't move past the guilt and the grief? That it wasn't yours to hold on to. Yes, and that fighting for me, for us. You're worth it, you said. You don't know why it had happened to me. And knew I would waste my time reliving the moments we had found out on repeat. But each time I think of you, I'm falling for you over again and I mean it. I want you and only you like I need the air to breathe. You should know by now there is nothing you could do that could try to change my mind. Because I'm in love with you, Marinette. You say this now, but how do you think you would have reacted if you discovered who I was earlier? Do you think you could have handled it? Accepted me for me? Or that I was Ladybug? 
she said nervously, her eyes peering at him cautiously. My marinette, it's something I can't answer. I like to think it would turn out okay, and I know it's hard. When you live like your whole world's a secret, you can't tell anyone, but if you had revealed to me the ladybug side of you, I'm the one that only I could know, and maybe I'd reveal to you too. Maybe you did. You didn't say. She mumbled under her breath. He leaned in a little closer, shooting a questioning look at her words. What was it you said? Answer me, please. In this different world, did I know? How is that possible? She raised her chest into his arms, but couldn't feel the breath inhale. You... You... Cat... Were... He didn't know if he could listen to the last part of the sentence, and she blurted out the words. It was you who was acclimatized as Cat. You were Cat Blank. Her shoulders slumped under his touch, as if she'd been feeling this inflated pressure in her for the past three years. However, he too was crumbling under the news. No. I've never been. How? Why? Really? You said it was our love that broke the world and I was standing, fighting you as Ladybug, but you kept calling me Marinette. The look in your eyes, which had become as blue as the surrounding waters, because I said I could save you, but you replied, you know what I want and I know who you are, wanting my miraculous. He shook his head, fighting against the unspoken fear that had been realised, and he hadn't been aware of it. It doesn't make any sense. Why would I act that way? Part of me always thought of you as Ladybug, or wishful thinking, as I was falling in love with Marinette too. So to find out you were both? The word joyful, excited, overwhelmed, blissfully happy, but never mad, that I could be akumatized. There must be something that you are missing. She pulled away from his hold slightly and furrowed her eyebrows towards him. What could he have said now that to cause such a look of anger and pain? I miss something? I thought you were across the broken buildings, tearing off pieces of your suit and breaking them in the hopes of freeing you. But then you cast me into the water and I saw... I saw a carbon copy of myself you had. No, no, no! What was she saying? It wasn't true. He couldn't. His stomach lurched inside of himself. Please, no, don't say! Killed me? Along with Monarch? Her voice overlapped his and was barely audible, but the words sank into the pit of his gut, breaking everything in its wake. His voice was fractured. He was fractured. He could never. But he also made the other facts clearer. This is why you felt you couldn't tell me. That you locked this burden into your mind? Then how can you say that you love me? When we fought? I killed you? I killed the world? Billions of people? How? Why? How was this idea, this other world, even possible? How could she still be with him after seeing that, knowing what he was capable of? Adrian struggled to compose himself as the dam he had fought to build inside of his mind after hope that he was starting to crack at the edges. What else was he capable of? I wish I could tell you, but that wasn't you. That was a different cat in another dimension. It was her turn to reach out for him. I'm sorry, I didn't tell you about it sooner. I just couldn't find the words. I mean, not knowing what point triggered it. I just knew I had to remain strong for us both. Even though he saw and felt the pain as she relived the past, her touch was like a ghost to him, 
seeing it but unable to feel it against his numb skin, not fully believing what was happening at this present moment. Instead, it only creates a bigger divide between us when you do that, hold back from me. When you have a certain look in your eyes, hiding something. I know when I hold you and love you, you'll get up and go before you fall apart. Not letting me in, even when I promise, I'll bring you every color that I find in your eyes. She paused for a moment. I think after facing that situation, I pulled back from you. Not intentionally at first, more to protect my heart as I realized, but refusing my growing feelings towards you, Kitty, to the point I felt alone. Standing on the brink of another world ending, but this time, I only had myself to blame. But then, you were suddenly there, standing next to me, holding out your hand to me, knowing I could never be alone if I always had you fighting next to me. And you always have been, as my kitty, but also as Adrian. She softly kissed his cheek, pressing her forehead against his temple. I knew then that my love for Kitty, that day grew past friendship, past being partners. But for you, as Ladybug, I had to remain strong, as for Marinette. Our bond only became stronger as we got closer, as I fell in love with my princess. He breathed, smiling at the memories of them standing on the balcony, discovering he was her buttercup. It was only natural in time, one of our identities would be revealed and part of me waited for the stark world to become a reality. Even when I tried to deny it, promised myself that we were past that mark and then Dee Dee happened and afterwards I watched my prince crumble, fearing. You would wake me up after one of your nightmares and it would break my heart. Declaring that Adrian aggress is now nothing, and it would be my place to remind you that you're perfectly imperfect. I would promise you, you're hurting, but you're worth it. Not believing me? You don't know why I would waste my time. How could I tell you then that I fought for us before, and I would do it again? That you? No other label but simply you my love, have always been worth it, even when I tried to deny it to myself. But I'm falling and I mean it, and I want you like I need it. There's nothing you could try to change my mind, because I'm in love with you." She turned him around to face her, expressing a deeper emotions with her eyes that words could never express, taking his breath away. The touch of her arms wrapping around his neck, edging her closer as her lips brushed against his, was everything. A tingling sensation ran through his body. It was the same sensation he had felt before after Dee Dee, confirming he was alive. He was awake. A reminder he had someone in his life fighting by his side. He always had. They relaxed back against the pillows, cradling in the safety of each other's arms. Marinette, my love, you made me whole again, when I couldn't trust the simple things around me, he breathed into her hair, and I understand why it was difficult for you to tell me, and how that event had clearly plagued your mind, and my hope now is since you have faced this ghost from our past, he won't haunt you any longer. She nodded her head, causing the hairs to tickle his nose. But even if they do, know this, my princess. One day I hope to call you Mrs. Marinette Dupang Chang Agras. That I will always be there for you, no matter what. So call me when you want me, and I'll come running. You'll find me waiting at the door. So tell me if you're lonely, and it won't last long. Because I'm in love with you. I will be the one always fighting by your side, and never the one against. 
he whispered at the weight of her become heavy against his chest and could hear the low murmurs of her sleepy breathing. He smiled at the grip around his waist, tightening, clutching the fabric of his pyjamas in her hand. Sleep well, my princess. Only the best dreams for you. The rhythm of a heartbeat lulled him softly to sleep, hoping tonight would be the first night they would find peace in their dreams and imagine a new future for them both. Thank you for listening to Perfectly Imperfect. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. It really does help the channel and it boosts the algorithm and all that joy. And make sure you comment down below because that also helps out. And make sure you subscribe. It's all good. So just press all the buttons. And I hope you are all good. And I will speak to you soon. Bye.